Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Midnight Paint and Body channel, where I try and share my little bit of auto body knowledge with you guys. In this video, we're going to be repairing all of the rust and giving a new paint job to this old Dodge truck. So let's give a quick rundown to what we're working on today. So this is an 08, I believe, typical Dodge truck. Um, low miler, this one, uh, 160,000 kilometers on it. So for you guys in the US, it's basically 100,000 miles. Um, not in bad shape, actually, as far as these trucks go. Now, we'll do a quick, real quick walk around. You might notice, wow, that box is mint. Um, several months ago, I did put new bedsides and new inner wheel houses in this, in this truck. So complete new bedsides. And these inner wheel houses were replaced as well. Because when you see these rust through here, the inner wheel house is always rust through as well. Um, at the time, I didn't have time to do the complete truck. Um, customer initially booked it for the bed. I did that, then he wanted the rest of the truck done, but I had to bring it back. This is about three, four months later. I'm just always kind of booked up about that long. So we'll give you the quick walk around. Now, on these trucks, when you see this, it is rusted through. There's just no two ways about it. You see how it's bubbled up here? They're always rotten. There is no point putting fender bottoms on these. I do a lot of metal work. I'm not opposed to making panels, whatever needs to be done. But on this modern stuff, it is just not worth it, especially on Dodges. Um, other trucks rust, Dodges rot. All the inners rot, everything. They're just, they're just worse than the other brands. Um, so in this case, we have new front fenders. And, you know, you can pick those up for a couple hundred bucks a piece. Of course, everything's skyrocketed in price in the last couple of years. But I think that's about where they're at now. So you can't do a whole lot of repair for a couple hundred bucks anyway. So you're much better off putting new fenders on. So the doors. Now, this is actually, for the most part, surface. Typically, <coughs> excuse me. These will start on the inside lip. So you can see how everything's lifting. It works its way around. You see it's actually doing the same here. And this one, for some reason, has moved up there. But we're going to sandblast all that, see what we find. Sandblast the bottom, the inside of the doors. Um, this truck, surprisingly, the rockers look good. Now... I really don't think it's gonna need rockers. I did get cab corners for it because it does for sure need cab corners. There is no question there. Um, when you see that, when you see these bubbles, they're rotten, that's all there is to it. Uh, rear door. Yeah, so the same, same thing in here. You see how it's all, there's that seam sealer. And the light's probably not the best here with that sun coming in the door, but... So yeah, so we're going to clean up inside and outside the doors. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Um, initially, this job, when I brought it in, it was for bedsides, fixed rust in the box. Um, but now that we're doing the rest of it, we're putting a new tailgate on as well. I just ordered that yesterday, so I don't have it yet. Um, but not only the damage, which actually, when it's canopies on, you don't even see that. But uh, down here, you see, when you see this, again, rusted through. The best thing to check on these is in here. Now you see in this pinch weld, this is all swollen. When that's all swelled up, your tailgate's garbage. Um, you could put a bottom on it. Then you would have to wrap it around, you have to clean up that inside. Again, it's just, it's just no point. The, uh, these tailgates are pricey now. Um, here in Canada, these, even for the aftermarket ones, are around 800 bucks, my cost. 
I make a little bit of money on them, but not much. Um, I always, always buy the Kappa certified parts. I find them to be much better quality. They're a good fit. There's nothing wrong with them. And the other side of this truck is more of the same, but it's actually not as bad. The doors look pretty good on this side. But I'll take you guys along for the kind of the rebuild of this thing. It'll give you an idea what's involved. I know I get, uh, well, if you follow my channel, you know I do a lot of Dodge trucks, uh, a lot of GM trucks. They seem to be the ones that guys like to spend the bucks on. When you got a truck like this, you know, this is the, I guess it's that diesel six speed and it's low mileage, so absolutely worth rebuilding. When you're looking at, you know, 100,000 plus to replace this truck with a new one, so. You know, I get uh, I get the older guys in, they ask for a price. This is not cheap, none of this stuff. Even for someone like me where my shop rates, you know, like half of what a collision shop would charge, it's still very expensive to get this done. Uh, usually the older guys, you know, I give them the estimate, they're like, you betcha, when can you do it? I get the younger guys and they're like, it costs how much? You know, you know, uh, three thousand dollar paint jobs haven't been around since the eighties. So, anyway, I figured I would take you guys through the steps. It'll give you some insight as to what's involved, and it maybe will give you a little motivation to buy some tools and uh, learn to do some of this stuff yourself. Because if you're going to be into old trucks and old cars. You know, the, the knowledge and the ability to be able to take care of some of this stuff, even if it's a little outlay of cash, it's going to save you in the long run. Um, obviously, I know not everybody has a shop and tools and, you know, all the stuff involved. But if nothing else, it will give you some insight as to, you know, what's involved and what you can do. Now, I don't have a whole lot of expensive tools. My outfit's pretty basic, but I make a living doing this and uh, and I am always busy. So that being said, guys, I am going to quickly tear this thing down. I am going to be taking the box off. I had it off a few months ago, so it'll come off easy. It needs to come off for the cab corners. Um, and then we'll rip down the rest and it'll happen about this quick. And there she is, just like that. Quick little bit of tear down. Actually not bad on these trucks. This only took a few hours and not really that bad at all. Um, so obviously I got the fenders and hood off. Now, hood doesn't have to come off. I always take them off. I like to paint them off the vehicle whenever I can. It just, you know, it's better than leaning over the fenders when I'm painting the rest of the truck. And because I paint in a homemade paint booth, I do usually end up having to do a bit of uh, sanding and polishing, especially on hoods because they're a big flat surface. So just uh, something that works a little better for me. So all the trim is off, uh, bed is off obviously, handles, all that stuff. Now something that kind of makes a difference sometimes between a kind of a budget paint job and a little bit better paint job, just a lot of the trim stuff you know, really does need to come off. I mean, if you're just making her look better, you can mask that, you can paint it on, but, but you know, you look in here, there is a bunch of bubbling, even more so in the back door here, starting underneath that trim. So it's stuff like that, that's gonna come back right away if you don't address it. Um, so yeah, so other than that, all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, inside of the doors, yeah, as you can see with that seal off the bottom, you can see, well, you can see a little better that the rust is really getting in there. But these doors are actually still really good because this uh, pinch weld isn't swollen. Usually once you get the rust in between, then this pinch weld starts to, to uh, expand. It's at rust jacks. The rust kind of, you know, jacks it out away from the other panel. And once that happens, I mean, you can't get in between and clean that rust out. So I'm going to take advantage of the day we're having here. It's kind of overcast, but it's actually just smoke. We're still having the wildfires, but we do have a nice breeze going too. So I'm going to get this outside after I take a quick break. 
and get some sandblasting done. That way it's all done when I get out here first thing in the morning, I can just start packing away at this thing and I will keep you guys posted along the way. All right, so I've gone through a bag of sand just doing that area there, but I just thought I'd bring you guys in and show you a couple things. So something I did realize as I was stripping the inside of this door a bit and seeing around the edges is that this truck has had door skins put on this side at some point in his life. So the other side of the truck is in much better condition. It's all original. This side has had collision repair on it and it uh, you know, that's something you see a lot with collision repair, unfortunately. They cheap out on primer and, yeah, just uh, don't do things as good as they could be. But I'm just going to show you something on stuff like this when you've got deep pits. So you can see how deep that is. Now, that'll flash rust in a matter of minutes, uh, especially out here in the humidity. So I'm going to take some aerosol primer. So no, this isn't what I'm trusting for this truck to continue to be rust free. That is just to stop this from flash rusting while I continue going around sandblasting. When I get to the point where I'm going to be putting good epoxy primer on this, this is all going to be basically sanded off. A little bit will stay way down in the pits where you can't get to it, but that's where you can't get to that rust. Now where it's not pitted, where it's just metal, that's fine when I run around that with 100 grit or 120 grit. It's going to clean all that metal off nicely again. It just won't get right down in those pits. So, so that's just going to keep that from flash rusting. But I'm going to continue on, do around the whole bottom of the truck. I'm going to open the doors and do around the insides. Um, just in the bottom. And we'll bring you guys back to see how it's going. So here's one side all sandblasted. It'll kind of show you guys what I've done, so basically just sandblasted all the rockers. And you can see the bottom of these doors are super pitted. You can see how deep that rust had gotten in there. So we got it just in time. And like I said there, as I was blasting, I noticed when I was stripping the seam sealer out of this side, and there was a few other things that showed me that this has had door skins. So this side of the truck must have been wiped out at some point in its life. I mean. You know, just getting a little older, so it could have happened any time in the last 15 years or so. Um, but, I mean, it all cleaned up good enough inside. Um, yeah, there's kind of how our cab corners look. Though I just dusted this one with a sandblaster just to kind of show you guys. But I knew that uh, the cab corners were for sure shot. But then as you can see on this side, I mean, it's just way better condition. You know, the doors still look good. There was no rust along the bottom of the doors. There was a little bit inside, so I've got that all cleaned up. But what I have noticed on this side, that I haven't looked at yet. So we do have some rust penetration here on the rockers. So where that side, the rocker is good, but everything else is rusty. This side, the rocker is perforated. So, not a big deal. We'll just have to put a... I do have some uh, chunks of rocker panels from some of these trucks here, so I'll probably just put the back piece in because she is so solid. I don't expect that rust is going to go up very far. Usually everything moves to the back, all the moisture and dirt and rust and all from the inside. The, the rear is always the worst. So, that's where that one is at. Pretty much the end of the day today, so I'm going to call her quits and we'll get back on this thing tomorrow morning. Hey guys, so it's the next day, so I've been prepping a little bit, so I thought I'd bring you guys in to kind of going to show you what you're up against on something like this. So 
like I had pointed out, kind of lots of the small little stuff, you really need to make sure you're getting that sort of rust out. Now, something I've noticed now, this, again, this is just an experience thing, but this is something I've really noticed over the years. Um, if you're doing body filler, so this thing has got pretty much rust problems all the way around the edges. Now I left this one a little bit so you can kind of see. So hopefully you can see that, but you can see how the rust is still working its way in. It's worked its way around the edge. Now this is something I've always noticed when you put body filler right to an edge. Now these doors have been skinned. Now a lot of the time when you hammer those skins around, they require a little bit of filler. Now, some, something I've also seen is often I see these where the body man has, has put a skim of filler around the edge, but then I end up just sanding it all off. Like it doesn't even have to be there a lot of the time. But having that filler right to the edge, it always seems to let the moisture under. Now, if you can leave that strip of clean metal, you know, sand that back so you've got clean, shiny metal before you reach the filler so that your good epoxy primer is going to seal that up. It's going to make things last a lot longer. Now, again, don't get me wrong here, guys. I, I do these videos just to kind of help out. I, I'm not trying to say that I, I'm better than anyone else at doing this stuff, but this is just some of the things that when you've been doing as long as I have, it's just an experience thing and you, you see these things and I've, I've said before in my videos that anytime you see a failure like that, that's an opportunity to learn how to do it a little better so it doesn't happen. So, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'm working my way around. You've really got to watch for these little uh, bubbles starting. See, there's one there I haven't completely sanded out. But that'll end up looking like that. So we'll see it's still a little bit of a rust stain there. So I'll take some coarse sandpaper and get that right clean before this gets primer. And then, you know, you look at stuff like this where it's really deep pitting. Now, really like sandblasting is the only way to get that right out of there. If you were to take and try and grind that rust out, just you're taking just as much good metal away as you are the rust trying to get right down. You'll never get it right out with a grinder. And kind of the same with, I always see or hear about these like rust converters and rust coatings. I don't buy into that stuff. I've never used it. As far as I'm concerned, that rust has to be completely removed. I mean, you can put your rust converter on top of it, but your rust is still there when you do that. And it's going to find its way back out. So I'm going to keep working my way around prepping these doors. Um, as you can see, uh, I've still got these window rubbers in. Now, when I get up to sanding around the top, I will lower the windows and pull those rubbers down. Just for with, when I was doing sandblasting and doing all the sanding, I just like to leave as much of the dust out of the vehicle as possible. When I get to that, we'll roll them down and pull those down and I'll paper these up to finish the sanding. So I'm gonna finish up these doors and then we'll move on to cutting out this cab corner. I'll kind of show you guys a little bit um, if you follow my channel, I've done lots of videos on doing, you know, cab corners and rocker panels and all that stuff. So I won't get real into detail with the specifics in this one. But, uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then, um, yeah, like seeing this, so, so this gives you an idea. So everything's got to be, everything's got to be cleaned out. And then from here, we're going to do epoxy primer, high build primer. We're going to sand it all over again. So that, that takes me to one of, my, one of my pet peeves in auto body. Now, you've all heard, you know, oh, well, the paint's in the gun. Guys, that means nothing. Now, just say I was painting this door and a customer might say, oh, well, well the paint's in the gun, just do that door. Well, you see, the actual application of paint, it's such a small piece of the process in the big picture. Now, the prep work, like all of this work and then priming it, re-sanding it, and on and on, that's the time-consuming part. Once I've got this completely prepped and masked up and in the booth, you know, putting the paint on is going to take an hour or two to, to paint the whole truck. You know, where it might take me a week to get it ready to paint. So, 
just one of those silly things I have heard so often in my trade. While the paint's in the gun, that doesn't mean jack. So, don't say that to your body guy. Okay, I'll bring you guys back in a bit. So I always like to kind of show you guys what we find inside and you know as you saw you know before I sandblasted this cap corners didn't look too bad you know sometimes you might have something that's just got a couple of tiny bubbles and that's you know whether it's just tiny bubbles or it's totally gone they're always going to kind of look like this inside so you can see she's uh she's all rusty you know, the inners get rusty, the inside of the rockers are rusty. So, what I always like to do with this stuff, I mean, I before I put the new cab corner on, now I need to do a bunch more trimming to fit for the new cab corner. I just kind of did that to show you what's up. I will get in there the best that I can and treat all of this with some good rust paint. Now, that kind of goes back to what I said, you know, on the outside, just putting, you know, rust converter or whatever isn't gonna stop anything but getting inside there I mean obviously you can only get so far inside so th this is a case where that kind of stuff can be beneficial because I'm gonna coat everything um, probably with POR 15 rust paint the best I can inside then I'll put the new cab corner over top and then when I'm done with that I will actually get into some of those holes in the back and spray inside here with some oil after everything's all painted and everything so um, I always kind of try and take that extra step to make sure things last as long as they possibly can but that kind of you know that shows you what the inside of the panels are doing you know when you're only seeing a little bit bubbling through on the outside you know the the inside is is rusty that's where it's coming from so I'm gonna continue trimming this up and I'll bring you guys back for another look in a bit. So it's the next day. I've been working on the cab corners a little bit. So you saw me cut the old ones out. Now, as you might have noticed, I say this all the time on these, but the new cab corners, they come up to about here. You don't necessarily always have to cut that high. You cut to, I, I like keeping them below this body line as long as the metal is clean. Once I cut them out, in this case, we're good. The rust was uh, all down low as usual. So I've got the new one trimmed up. Um, I have gone ahead and coated the inside. Now I've used some POR 15, some really good rust preventative paint. I like to just thin it down and put it in my spray gun, just my crappy primer gun. And I sprayed in there as much as I could. So way down inside, so I've coated everything. It's actually, as you can see, so this is what we want. It's dripping out of the uh, pinch welds so it's gotten in between those layers of metal and then so that was yesterday so it's all dry so I've trimmed up my new cab corner I like to butt weld these so they do fit nicely if you spend a little time trimming so that'll just be a, a welded seam along there I'll punch some holes along the back so I can plug welded along the back this will all be coated with weld through primer before this goes on so I'm gonna go ahead and weld on some cab corners I've got the other side ready as well uh, again not gonna record a bunch of that guys um, if you look back on my channel I have done videos doing rockers cab corners all that kind of stuff so if you want to see any of that more in depth it's out there so I'm going to go ahead and start welding. I'll bring you guys back a little later and uh, check in and see where we're going next. Oh, and incidentally, if you are looking for these parts, um, so left side on this is an RRP1796 right there. Uh, the other side should be an RRP1797. 
So the RRP designates it's a repair panel, so a partial body panel. All of this stuff is available through your local auto parts store. So here's another little check-in on our cab quarters. So I've got them both welded on. So as you can see, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, just gonna weld it along that inside seam. And as always with this kind of stuff, spend a little extra time with the fitting. Nothing wrong with these parts, they fit well. Um, we all know that guy that worked in a body shop in 1980 that'll tell you that all those aftermarket parts, they don't fit. Well, we've come a long way since then. They're not perfect, but for the most part, all of this stuff fits very well. I've never had much trouble. So, next step, I'm gonna just grind down these welds, finish this off with a little bit of filler, and then I'm gonna finish kind of prepping up the truck to this point, all the rest of the truck, the roof, the other side, uh, finish up the cab corners, and then the next time you see this, I think, we'll take it around to the paint booth, we'll mask it up for some primer. So it's the next day again here, guys. I've been working on this old Dodge a little more. So I took it a step further and just pulled the four doors off yesterday. Now, I realized the more I got working on this one in particular, um, this uh, rocker panel is actually all body filler all the way along, and the rust had really crept under it. So I took it all out. Um, re-sandblasted some of it and just redid the filler. Now, it just shows you that sometimes in the quest to get rid of all of the rust, you just have to go a little farther. Um, honestly, taking the doors off of these trucks is super easy. You know, probably took me 25 minutes to have all four off. There's, there's not much to these ones. Uh, the Dodges are nice because they do unplug at the pillar. And then they're just, yeah two bolts and two nuts on each door so they're they're heavy but they're they're pretty easy um so yeah so this makes me think you know i kind of pointed out before on this job that it had had door skins put on this side and probably a fender because that this fender was really rusty the passenger side actually wasn't too terrible um so i would suspect that you know at some point i mean this truck's a 2008 but you know, maybe it was laid on its side at some point, or it was uh, in a collision where it was hitting the side. So I would suspect the bottom of those doors were probably pushed into that rocker, which uh, dented it. So, I mean, it was nothing crazy, but it definitely had a uh, skim of body filler the entire length. So, just collision repairs. So, as you can see, I've got her masked up in the booth. I'm just going to go ahead and put... Uh, two coats of a good epoxy primer over all of the bare metal and then I'll give it another two coats of uh, high build urethane primer and then at that point I'll probably just sand all the bottom and actually just paint this section and that uh, that's done I mean I would paint the door openings anyway first but yeah I'll go ahead and get that all painted and then by that time hopefully I have all the doors sanded and I'll try and get primer on them out there and we'll go from there so I'll keep you posted. Well, it's Monday morning again. We're getting back at her. So I figured I'd give you guys a quick check-in. So I've got the Dodge truck. I've got all the lowers in primer. So that's um, epoxy primer and some high build primer. So next step for this, I'm going to prep all this area and paint all of the inners so that the doors can go back on. Um, but we do have a little work to do on the doors. You can tell I have a lot of old junk. This is where I was parking my 59 pickup for the weekend. I went for a nice ride on the old chopper last night and uh, see, she's marking her spot pretty darn good. Needs a main seal and transmission again. It's not real uncommon on the old shovel heads, but it's also been kind of sitting for a couple of years. I haven't ridden it much, so. Anyway, unrelated to what we're working on. So I got the outside of our doors in primer. So I figured, sorry, compressor's still running. I'm just getting started here. But. So these are the two doors that were still original paint, passenger side. Now these didn't need much, just some rock chips, some really minor surface rustle on the bottom. 
But then you look at these ones, these are the doors that have had door skins done at some point since this truck was new. And you can see just how deep all the pitting was on these. Like the rust had really gotten into these. See that area there? See this one, the rear door. You know, that's really deep. Now, the way I like to do these, I don't know if it makes a difference, but you know, I could uh, do some body filler on all that pitting before priming and then it's nice and smooth. But I like to prime them so that I know that epoxy primer is getting right into those pits and then the high build is gonna fill a lot of it, but this is gonna need uh, a coat of some putty to, to smooth it off and then reprime it. So while it is more work to do it this way because I need to do, I do primer and then filler and then reprime it, um, I just think it's a better repair when you've got that deep pitting. So, yeah, I don't know if the camera picks up just how deep that rust had gotten in, but, you know, I don't think we were far away from it actually being perforated, so. So, anyway, um, with those in primer, I'm going to flip these over because I need to paint the inside bottom of all four doors. So I'm going to do that, get some paint in there, uh, get some paint on the inner rocker panels in there. So I'm going to start getting this all, all ready and do it all at once and I'll bring you guys back for a check-in and to show you the process. Well, good morning again, everybody. Uh, figured I'd give you another quick check-in. So I've gone ahead and painted the lower part of the Dodge Cab here. Um, so yeah, I just painted all the way underneath. Once I do have the doors and everything on, I probably will still sand that rocker again and I'll be masking off the doors so it'll get more paint under there a little more protection won't hurt and something I always tend to do on these I actually had the roof ready too and I painted the roof at the same time now that's just something I do you know for one thing not being overly tall as you can see I lent the air out of the tires to bring her down a little bit and uh, I, I just find having the roof done rather than, you know, leaning over while you're painting the roof and then you're painting the doors. Uh, it just makes a cleaner job on the outside. It's just, uh, yeah, just something I do. So that's out of the way. Roof, rockers. Uh, see, way down there, other end of the shop, I painted the bottom inside of the doors as well. So my next step, I'm gonna take this truck out of the booth, pull her out of the way. I'm gonna slide the box in there. Now the box, as I mentioned earlier, I did do bedsides on this box and painted it a few months ago. Um, the customer had actually, he told me when he was putting this canopy on, it slipped off the side and put some big scratches in this side. Probably would have polished out, but I thought, well, I'm, I'm just gonna give it a sand and repaint it for him. Uh, he's a good guy, a good customer. But then, incidentally, this side, when I was driving the truck in, you see my metal shear down there, well, one of the legs was sticking out. I got the leg with the tire, made the shear go like that, and funked into the bedside. So, back on the first day I was working on this, I actually um, put a dent in this bedside, just a small little dime-sized deal, but, so I figured, well, I gotta fix that. I figured I'd fix that, so I'll just respray the box, and it'll all be fresh and new when he gets it back. And while I'm doing the box, I've got the new tailgate there all prepped up, so I'll do that at the same time. And then the new front fenders, I'll hang those, give them a coat of sealer over the entire thing, paint all the inners, and then they'll be ready to bolt on. And then later on, after this is all painted, while it's drying, I can be hanging those doors, back on the cab and start getting that prepped up for paint and I also have the hood to do as well so still lots to do it is Tuesday morning I my plan is to have this truck done and out on Friday so let's get at her so here's another check-in for you guys so I got a little paint sprayed this morning so there's our new tailgate the right color now the fenders that isn't a final coat of paint now I always paint all the inside edges and the inside of the fenders and I like to put a coat of paint 
up around all the wheel openings and everything inside just to give it a little extra corrosion protection. Um, I just had a little paint left in a gun, so I just gave the fenders one quick coat of paint. They got to be sanded again regardless, so this way when I bolt them on the truck tomorrow, they just need a quick sand, and I'll paint them with the rest of the truck. The box is all painted again, so that looks good. Like I said, that, was, that wasn't really part of the job this time, but uh, sometimes it just happens. Um, inside panel, off the old tailgate. I don't sand out scratches and stuff, but I always just give these a quick sand and a coat of paint just so they don't look completely out of place when you put them back on. So back out to the truck here. So I just finished throwing the doors on. So yeah, so all four doors are back on the cab. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, like I said before, these doors are actually really easy. Um, I do these myself all the time. They're heavy as hell, the front ones, but I always manage. One of these days I'll get one of those door lifting jacks, but uh, you know, maybe one day. Maybe one day when I don't have two kids in university. So that's at that point. So I am gonna start prepping the cab. So I'm gonna start sanding everything, getting it all ready for paint. The stuff in the booth can sit till tomorrow. And I just have the hood to sand as well. So I'll paint the hood when I do the cab. So that's today's Tuesday. If I get this all prepped up, I'll hopefully get the rest of the paintwork done tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And I'll have Thursday to assemble it and Friday to finish her up. So. If all goes to plan, I'll get this thing done this week like it is scheduled to be. Might just take a couple of late nights, but I'll get her done. So anyway, guys, hopefully this is helpful. I'm kind of kind of just showing you what's involved. You know, if you're wanting a truck painted or you've got one of these trucks, you want the rust fixed. Now this is, like I said, an exceptionally clean truck. It's not very often you get one of these that doesn't need rocker panels. So this one is a, an exception to the rule for sure. But uh, of course, being a really low mileage example of this truck is uh, kind of what saved it. You know, I have seen that in the past where, you know, you can have this 2008 pickup, the 160,000 K on it. You can have another 2008 pickup with 400,000 on it. Even though they're the same 15 years old, the low mileage trucks are always way less rusty. I guess they've just got that much less time on the road. So yeah, just something to look for. I guess if you're looking to buy a truck, low mileage is obviously always better. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get prepping and I'll bring you guys back yeah, later today or tomorrow when we get back at her. Well, good morning everyone. Next day again. So, worked a little late last night and uh, let's just say the neighbor's roosters aren't even awake yet. It's a little early, but uh, I've got the truck in the booth. She is all prepped up, ready to mask. Uh, I'm going to try and squeeze the hood and everything in here. It's a little tighter than I thought it would be with this truck, so I am going to rearrange. Probably once the truck's covered up, I'll put some blocks on the frame and set the hood on the frame of the truck and paint it back there. So, that's all pretty straightforward, that part. Uh, the last few bits and pieces, so this should be the last of the paint work. So I'll get this all masked up. Painted today, can cure till tomorrow. While it's curing, there's some stuff we can do. Um, that's the thing with paint work, you always try and kind of create one or two steps ahead. So while, once I get that painted while it's curing, I can assemble the tailgate, finish up the box, have that all ready to go on the truck. And then it would be a matter of just slapping it on that I'll need to uh, finish assembling the truck, which uh, isn't a huge deal on these. These are pretty easy, these ones. So I will uh, get masking and I'll kind of keep you guys posted as we go along. 
So one more check in here guys. So I've got the truck all masked up and washed down and ready to paint. So masking is my least favorite part of this process doing these vehicles. It just takes so damn long. So as you can see, a little tight quarters in here, but I managed to get the uh, front valence and the hood set up. So that'll be good. So there's a look at the truck. As I showed you before, the roof is already painted. So that's nice that so that's out of the way. So pretty much lunchtime. I'm going to go take a break. Next time you guys see this truck, it will be all white. So here's a little sneak peek for you guys. She's all painted, nice and bright white. Well, it all turned out pretty good. I don't see any real issues. A few little dust specks. I'll need to do a little nib and polish, but nothing major at all. The hood turned out nice as well. You know, for painting in an old homemade paint booth, it works all right. Nothing ever comes out absolutely perfect, but it uh, comes out pretty darn good. So. so, we're let this thing cure up overnight. In the morning, I'll get it unmasked and out of the booth, and we'll start putting her back together. We're getting close to the end of this job here guys so just figured I'd point out a couple things real quick now you saw me put the box back on the truck not recommending you use my method but it's worked for me for years sometimes you just figure out how to do things when you work alone I have probably done a hundred boxes like that um, just a couple of straps and using my my uh, cherry picker there Makes it so I can do it myself. You know, it's, you can't always round up three buddies to help you lift a pickup box. Um, the cart that I always put the box on, if you're on a budget like me, you get some free pallets and screw some casters to the bottom of one. Then you can stack them up however many pallets high you want it. Again, just a, a cheap thing. It's worked for me for a long time. Uh, pretty much down to the hood. I'm gonna give this a quick sand and polish in the morning before it actually goes on the truck uh, I just figured first I'm gonna show you kind of my uh, my secret weapon against uh, rust So this is a cheap undercoating gun Now I take this at the end of every job or every job like this one anyway Fill it up with used motor oil, which when you have a whole bunch of cars like I do, there's plenty of that. And I spray the heck out of the inside of every panel. Now, so as you can see, I've sprayed all up inside the doors. So it's all going to seep into these pinch welds on the inside, which is where your rust really starts. Now there's always access holes like this one, um, you know, inside the fenders. The biggest thing on these pickups, I don't really want to crawl under here too much because it's all dripping, but if you see along the inside there, there's all kinds of access holes on the inside of the rocker and up in here into the cab corner. The oil dripping on my head. Same thing, I spray, I spray the heck out of the inside of the rockers till the oil is pouring out. And I do the same up in the box, so up into these braces that are on the inside of the box from the inside obviously 
and up over the wheel wells and the same up into the back or in the taillight area. And then I also spray all inside the tailgate. I usually just go in through these holes, do each side, then it's spraying all the way across. Same thing, it's gonna be seeping all down into these pinch welds. So as you can see, the oil's leaking out of there now, so. It's a little messy for a while. Um, that's gonna, I'm gonna hopefully leave this truck parked outside overnight. Then in the morning, it'll be mostly dripped out and I can finish assembly. So just figured I'd show you that. That's another super inexpensive way to uh, prolong your truck. Even if it's not a redone truck like this, you're, you're, you got an old truck and it's starting to get rusty. Sprayer full of oil, it'll stop that rust from from growing now don't spray full of oil if you're planning on taking it to a body shop anytime soon because then it's just a big mess but uh, you know if you're just trying to keep her alive it's uh, super cheap maintenance so i'm gonna leave this here for now it's getting late today so i'm gonna do a quick tidy in the shop in the morning we'll polish up the hood get it on and i'll do the fine few final touches and we'll do a final walk around of the truck when she's all done everybody another job ready to go so this one turned out pretty good um, kind of like I said in the beginning this was a a cleaner example of one of these trucks it didn't, didn't need rocker panels but it did still need cab corners and fenders and you know before I did the cab I did do bedsides wheel houses and this time we did a tailgate on it so she is pretty much all new so it'll be a good truck for this guy for a long time to come. You know, a little bit of maintenance, keep them clean. You know, they, they, last, they last a long time. So one of the uh, most common questions I get asked on jobs like this is how much does it cost? Um, I don't like to blurt out those numbers over the internet because, you know, all of these jobs that I do are customer vehicles. You know, they may not want the whole world knowing how much money they're spending, you know, a little bit of privacy, but, you know, to, to kind of boil it down for you guys, if you're wondering what it costs to do a job like this, now, the box itself, now, the bedsides, the inner wheelhouse, the tailgate, you know, there's about $5,000 in parts right there, fenders and cab corners, you know, a couple hundred bucks aside for the cab corners, it actually, I misspoke on these fenders earlier. They're like 400 bucks a piece now. So, you know, there's another two grand in parts in the cab. And then something like this, you're looking at, I mean, for, for me in my shop, it's a minimum of about 100 hours to do a complete paint job. That's what I usually tell people to start. You need to expect about 100 hours before getting into you know, a lot of extra metal work. Yeah, you know, that covers basic stuff, but... So, you know, you do the math. My shop rate is less than most shops, but I'm still 75 bucks an hour for what I do. So, you know, 100 bucks an hour, 7,500 bucks. You know, we've got $7,000 worth of parts. So, it adds up. But, you go replace this truck now with a new one, she's 100 grand, so... It is well worth spending ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to keep these trucks alive, um, especially if you've got something 
that you like and that you've looked after and that you know you've got good running gear and so on. So, that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope in some way, shape or form this might help you guys out with your projects or with just knowing what to expect if you want to have something like this done. So, as always guys, any questions on anything like this, feel free to hit me up on the socials or through the uh, YouTube comments. And um, if there's ever anything you would like to see more in depth of any of this kind of stuff, if it's something I can do, I will do my best to uh, do a video on it for you guys. I always say I'm, I'm not the best body man. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a pretty average body guy, but uh, I just try and share a little bit of what I know, what I've learned over the years. So, do me a favor, leave a comment on the video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe and come back and see the next one. You never know what it's going to be.